that there were one or two radio speeches which Mustinat had made as from America. These were quite brief and a bit formal and uh, just uh, very, very general. Now, surprisingly, we find that Mushid has given a radio speech also on the last trip he made in America in 1926. And uh, uh, some of you may know, all of you may know, that precisely at that trip, Mushid was very concerned in summing up many of his previous teachings in a number of wonderful lectures mental purification, mysticism, several of his greatest lectures were precisely given during that last trip to America in 25-26. And here we also find then a um, um, speech over, over the radio given from San Francisco in March 1926, in which in a very brief compass, Murshid sums up a number of his basic uh, insights and teachings and uh, as I say, there's a very briefly, very comprised, but still very clearly a kind of summary of a number of his main themes. Not, of course, not all of them, but certain very principal ones. And uh, one thing which it is worth remembering is when Moshe speaks about spirituality, then, of course, the ultimate understanding of spirituality is the life of the soul, the life of the soul in its fulfillment. It is as that in mysticism is the greatest form of spiritual achievement. But at the same time, as you know, Murshid, if you think of, again, the lecture or, on mysticism of the meanings of the word spirit, there are different meanings, the word spirit, Murshid, that lecture is four different meanings, but at the same time, he has that emphasis that spirit also may mean not only the soul, but the soul with the mind and the heart together. And that was all the, what we would call the spiritual, the intellectual, the emotional faculties of the human being also are comprised in that concept of spirit. So when you listen to Moshe's lecture or read them, it's always important to keep in mind that these two forms of understanding when Moshe speaks about the spiritual, about spirituality, the soul, or the soul with the intuition of the heart and with the intellectual understanding of the mind. <clears throat> so this is these are Mushet's words, as I said, over the radio, over the radio given in San Francisco, the 27th of March, 1926. <clears throat> and he begins, of course, with a theme, as you would expect in Mushet's case, speaking about religion. In many ways, if you translate, if you add to religion ideology, that would come to very much the same. And I think that is what I keep in mind. I've thought a religion is also a form of ideology in a certain sense, and the political ideology of today go along the same terms as the uh, religious convictions in the past. So keep that in mind as well. <clears throat> The need of religious unification is greater today than it has been ever before. In old ages, there were different religions. There was the spirit of religion at the back of them. Now there remain many religions, but without the spirit. Therefore, there are barriers to divide humanity into different sections without that light to guide them towards unity. In the past, most of the religious wars have been on account of the religious differences. And now the same influence prejudices people towards one another without them being ardent followers of any religion. It seems a fragrant rose has withered away, but the thorns still exist. <laughs> That's much it for you. <laughs> what need be done is to do away, not with religions, but with the religious prejudice. How can it be done? It can be done by a Hindu praying in the mosque 
a Parsi going to the pagoda, a, a Jew praying in the Christian church. So they each frequent one another's houses of worship in the same reverent attitude as they had towards their own church. The other way is to inaugurate universal worship, that in the same service, scriptures of all the great teachers are read with reverence and respect, and in the name of and the name of God be glorified by people of different denominations, all worshiping together. <clears throat> the third way is to study the great religions of the world with tolerance and appreciation, without preconceived prejudices, and to find out the fundamental principle of all religions to be one and the same. <clears throat> it is of no value the equality of man as it is known and practiced at the present time. It mars the individual progress and pulls down the highest man to the lowest level instead of rising the man from the lowest level to the highest pitch. Democracy, as understood today, is but a wrong idea of democracy. As every man today seems to say, I am as good as you, instead of saying, I must become as good as you. That would be more profitable for himself and to humanity. Man today wants to show himself to be perfect, instead of being perfect. It seems as if the general trend of mind today is to belittle everything that is high and lofty because it is not within one's grasp. That is why one thinks less of it. But it is better to look facts at, at the facts in the face. But it is better to look the facts in the face instead of wanting to ignore them. <clears throat> the ever-growing commercialism and all prevailing materialism have made man ignorant of himself and of life. His world is business and his God is money. In the end, he arrives to a realization that his life is spent in collecting wealth, and by the time it is collected, he cannot even use it for himself. He has lost his energy, exhausted his brain, confused his faculties, and arrived at nothing. People speak of brotherhood in the form of trade unions of professional federations, of national alliances. But what are these unions founded upon? They are founded upon self-interest. And when it comes to their own interest, no more such brotherhood exists. There can only be one brotherhood, and that is the spiritual brotherhood which makes two souls understand one another without spoken words, where two people are eager to serve one another in sympathy and without thought of thanks and appreciation. For in the light of spirituality, the other is but one's own self. <clears throat> Science today, is making a headway in the world of facts, in realm of mechanical inventions and scientific discoveries, destroying at the same time the germ of spirituality. Religious attitude, moral conception, spiritual attainment, thoughtfulness, consideration, good manner, 
the chivalry of the knights, heroic tendencies and lofty ideals seem to be disappearing every day more and more. And in spite of all the progress we make, humanity still seems to go, go, be going downward, seems to be going downward in certain directions. There is no doubt about it. Woman is freer in this age than she has ever been. Yes, I say, she, she is free to such an extent that, that there is nothing for her to depend upon. Women and men today in number are drifting along life's path from morning till evening, as busy as they are, earning from their toil as much as would reach from hand to mouth, yet not knowing whence they come and whither they go. The same matter which nations have taken of forming alliances on the ground of their own interest is adopted by the people generally. Friendship today means what one can, out, can get out of it. And on the same principle, very often, even marriage is based. They say, we have no time to cultivate love nature. We are too busy to, too busy to love. <laughs> today, love means pastime, amusement, entertainment, a little fun. In reality, love is self-sacrifice. Love is keen regard for the pleasure and displeasure of the beloved. Love is thoughtfulness. Love is consideration. Love is respect. Love is service. And beyond all, love is God. For God is love. <clears throat> The balance maintained in life by action and repose. The balance is maintained in life by action and repose. Everything people have adopted as culture, besides intellectual studies, is again in the form of action. Gymnastics, sports, club life, stage, amusements. All these make one physically and mentally active, but there, is, there are no methods adopted to bring about the condition of repose needed for souls as busy as they are in the most active cities of the United States. Is repose not as important as action? Perhaps, it is more important if it were only known what is gained by it. The mystics of all ages have studied and practiced the different ways of attaining peace by repose, and in so doing have discovered the inspiration and the power latent in man. <clears throat> Therefore, a Sufi does not mean by mysticism a state of dream or a fact of wonder working. He only means by mysticism a science which is beyond reason, a keen insight into the deeper side of life, a broader outlook, a keener perception of the hidden laws of nature, an unearthly joy and an innate peace. Sufism, therefore, is beyond uh, caste, creed, nation, race, or religion. Those of us who hope for the reconstruction of the scheme of life should contribute their efforts to the spiritual awakening of humanity. Those were Bush's words over the radio, and you see to what an extraordinary status, uh, in what an extraordinary Bush uh, summarizes the elements of his teaching in just 
single paragraphs, all forming one brief uh, lecture, but also many of the elements of his teaching are contained just in one paragraph. <clears throat> I wonder whether all this was clear to you, just in one reading, if you didn't know this lecture before, might it all be a bit clearer if there are any questions about any of these fragments, then the floor is open to you to offer any comments, observations, or questions, whichever you would like to. <clears throat> Uh, in March, uh, March 27th, 1926. And so the, exactly that last, uh, you know, that the strange story that Mujdinath Khan had intended to leave for India after the summer school of 1925. And then, of course, he was then persuaded by his brother, uh, uh, Mahbub Khan, insisted that he ought not to go to India because everybody was afraid, but nobody could persuade him not to. Everybody was afraid that once Murshid goes to India, he might not return. And so many times Murshid was asked, please, to, not to go. But it was only when Mahbub Khan, who had, as you know, been his very close brother and was called by Murshid his wise man. <laughs> so he tried to persuade him and he then managed and at last to persuade Murshid not to go to India. And Murshid then said very explicitly, well, well, I do know, well, then this year I will not go to India. My brother insists that I should not go. But in that case, I will go to America. And then from December 1925 until late May or early uh, 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 June 1926, he went to America. And there you find that wonderful phenomenon that precisely in that last year of Mushid lectures, the numbers of the most masterly lectures in which he not only summarizes all his earlier teachings, but gives a further elaboration on it, a deepening and a, a, a completeness of vision, which are quite unique. Uh, I well remember a summer school which was held in Holland after the war, when for the first time these lectures on mental purification we have read. They had not been known previously. They had been discovered in the archives of the biographical department. And we read there in, uh, during those, uh, that summer school. And they were an absolute revelation. People never had yet heard of these lectures. And we really felt that was one of the high watermarks of Murshid's teachings. So um, that, that might be me myself. I'm sorry. I apologize. And uh, well, that's it. That's one thing that goes on all day, so you're kind of hard to that. Anyway, so uh, then, um, so then, uh, that was really uh, uh, you, the same thing which I just already emphasized in this lecture. Here you find a number of most basic ideas, uh, 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 well, represented in just the brief paragraphs. As you say, first it was a basic religious idea, the idea of the jointness of religions, where Murshid says one should be able to pray in the, the, the temple or the, or the church or whatever of a different religion than one's own, with the same reverence and the same uh, attitude one would do in the, the, the temple of one's own religion. <clears throat> that was his first thing. That, 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 and then he says one way is to go to another. A, a temple and pray there. The second thing, we should then say in the universe, worship, read all these sacred texts with the same reverence, with the same understanding, with the same sense, for, that they give you something. And then the third place, and that is a wonderful thing, and PSE I had just been doing that for us in a masterly way, study the religions and see their depth, see how they uh, have that uh, read about these lectures, study them with tolerance and appreciation without any preconceived ideas and find out the fundamental principle of all the religions to be one and the same. Well, that's just what we heard this afternoon, this evening in a masterly perspective as PCA gave it. And then Murshid says, speaks about the equality of men, which of course to Murshid is the equality of the human soul. The soul people are uh, equal because 
as they say in the Quranic verse, every every human being proceeds from the breath of God. Every human being is an equal of the other because all of them have that soul which derives from divine impulse, which derives from the divine being itself. But there is that other challenge of the human being again, but that if uh, they are not, the human being has to develop his own qualities, has to develop his own thing. And there it does not matter that they have to be equal because they you never get anywhere. But there the, the needs to be the difference of human beings, each with their own qualities, their own creativity, their own talents, whatever, and let them be different. That doesn't matter at all. There the important thing is to achieve harmony, not equality of qualities, but harmony between qualities. And all of you who know music know that in music, the liveliness of music is often caused by dissonance, the dissonance which are the mastery of the composer is to resolve dissonance in such a way that it becomes a beautiful presentation of the musical work. So there you are, the harmony is the challenge of the human beings rather than equality. And then Moshe had the, then it comes the famous theme in the four, following paragraph, the thing which Moshe has from his early Indian years has constantly uh, 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 spoken about is commercialism and materialism. As Moshe here says, the ever-growing commercialism and all-prevailing materialism. Well, we know all of that because these are qualities, whereas in the religious field, for instance, the togetherness of religions has developed since Moshe's time. You have all kinds of groups where different religions unite in joint um, uh, worship. But uh, this commercialism and um, the materialism have continued to a very large extent. And the, what is the point of collecting money? And after you have collected it, you've got nothing from it because you've wasted your life in, in gathering it and nothing else in gathering that money. But what are you going to do with it? <laughs> when the spirit is not also developed and advanced in that way. So that was his further section. As I say, a very familiar one in Moshe's teachings. Because that was the one thing which struck him as he came from that comparatively peaceful India of, of 1910 into the very advanced civilization of America and Western Europe. That was the one thing that he saw as the dominant danger there. <clears throat> and then, of course, this, another very trenchant remark he made. Science today is making headway in the realm of mechanical inventions, scientific discoveries, destroying at the same time the germ of spirituality. And as I say here, you can see all the different characteristics of spirit, not only the life of the soul, as like I said, but the sense of the intuition of the heart and of the, uh, uh, and of even the intellectual comprehension that goes beyond a pure materialistic interpretation of things. And then he turns that to the personal aspect of uh, uh, women and men, and how the drifting along along life's path, we should say, is from morning to evening, busy as they are, <clears throat> not knowing whence they came and whither they go. And how human alliances, personal alliances with people like marriage, like all kinds of relationships, are just uh, also suffering from this materialism, which uh, encompasses everything. As here, as Moshe says in the basic uh, uh, le the line of this passage, today love means pastime, amusement, entertainment, a little fun. In reality, love is self-sacrifice. Love is keen regard for the pleasure and displeasure of the beloved. Love is thoughtfulness. Love is consideration. Love is respect. Love is service. And beyond all, love is God. For God is love. At the same time, in the collective behavior of people, and that's the preceding paragraph which I omitted here, uh, Moshe says that science is killing the German spirituality. And then there he again enumerates a number of values which are endangered by human life, in the current human life, where he says religious attitude, moral manner, the chivalry of knights, heroic tendencies, and lofty ideals. 
seem to be disappearing every day. So there are these qualities with motion very, in a very forthright way, confronts his audiences with. And then which it comes to another famous of theme of his, that is action and repose. Not much about that, a, a bit of repose, not meaning to rest when you're tired, but on the contrary, when you're not tired at all and quite active and, and, and vivid, still to be able to have that control of repose, which you wish to achieve. Have repose rather than constant activity in order to have a chance of turning within, of seeing what happens in that silence, in that, in that way. Yeah. Not point is not, not out, don't uh, fall asleep because of tiredness. That's, that's it, of course, not a way of, of uh, observing repose, but having that repose consciously. So it's the abstaining from outside attention in order to turn into inner uh, listening and inner attention. And so then Murshid again explains the nature of uh, mysticism, which is beyond the difference and divisions with the right man, which is not a, straight, a state of dream or illusion, but it means a mastery of the inner senses. And so it's that inner, inward development can help is the one thing which will have the reconstruction, as Moshe he says, the scheme of life and help people in their efforts for us to achieve a spiritual awakening of humanity. So here again, you see the great themes of Moshe's Sufism enumerated in this, uh, in this particular way. So uh, nobody, I believe, had any questions that shows how wise you all of you have become. Thank you.